people, it's Danny from Conscious Calisthenics here, back with another ex-vegan interview with someone that's a very good friend of mine that I spent a lot of time with many years ago in Thailand, so I know her personally. And she ended up really affecting her health in a negative way due to being on a specific type of vegan diet that she'll go into detail in a short while. In 2013, she went on a specific raw vegan diet for around eight months to heal some health issues. But then she found a period when she had some issues going on. So she started experimenting with some animal foods. I think it was mostly fish and eggs. And then due to her dogmatic brainwashed programming from all the teachers in the raw food movement that she'd listened to, she then went on a strict vegan diet from 2014 to 2016 for two uh, years. And then after that period of time she started experimenting again some animal foods mostly fish and eggs for around almost three years until finally switching to a meat-based diet which is a strict carnivore diet for at least two months which started to really help her regenerate and rebuild her health fully and this story is a crazy story because she got to a point where it just broke down her body that she she ended up with really bad sarcopenia ended up with orthorexia it just destroyed her body her health her mental health her whole way of life she just couldn't function it was a very emotional emotional experience for her and yeah it almost ended up killing her quite literally so yeah this is going to be amazing so make sure you watch this start to finish so thank you Sarah for coming along. Uh, thank you Danny really I'm really happy to be talking to you today because uh, all the interviews that you did with the other ex-vegans really inspire me to at least or even your videos trying carnivore diet to at least try meat again or try to eat meat well uh, incorporate meat in my diet because i was craving meat for all this time my body was uh was really wanted you know i was uh was think i ended up thinking about meat until october november well was last november i i did this experiment it was i was like uh, very shy i went to a restaurant um they only sell meat, uh, and I try meat alone. <laughs> it was like a mind-blowing experience. I felt like, what? That was me seeing, oh my God, and then my body felt good, you know? So I tried the carnivore diet. I follow your videos. Also, Sean Sh 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 Baker, uh, Dr. Well, you know, the movement. Because, yes, I, I, I realized I was uh, in this dogmatic paradigm that. Um, uh, meat is bad. Meat is is make you cancer. Whatever you know, I, I've I've done all the, and I've done it wrong. You know, when I was raw vegan, I was like doing like uh, the eighty ten ten diet. Well, like yes, I so studied at the book. If I could just stop you there, sick. So yes, yeah, so you say about the raw veganism. So if you could add on to everything that I just mentioned with your whole journey, like why you got into veganism, what your specific diet was, how it actually helped okay. you, but then how it inevitably went downhill. So if you could okay. just give more details on that first, if that's okay. Okay, just for starting, I just upload a video, it was one of the hardest things I did in my life. I just uploaded a video that took me a month to collect all the pictures I did from all the story, and it's in my new YouTube channel, if, yeah. if you want to see, because the pictures are very shocking. Anyway, I start in 2013, I was uh, fed up with my chronic uh, pain, like uh, I had issues, allergies, I had um, some uh, things I want to heal because it was um, from a chronic disease called spondylitis and chilozentis, which is like arthritis rheumatoidus, more or less, for you guys to fix. My mother has it, my, my sister and my brother. Anyway, I was fed up with medicines, with the pills. So, and this time I was already vegetarian, okay, in 2012. But in 2013, I heard that raw vegan, can, you can heal everything. People can hear allergies, uh, anyway, et cetera, et cetera, so on. So I read something. I didn't have any friends. I'm a very, like, when I heard, listen to something that attracts me, I go read and uh, search information. And then, okay, I try. I went to Mexico. And there, with some friends, I tried one month experiment, raw vegan, no, just fruits and veggies. From that month on, wow, I felt so good. I felt my body, like my energy levels rise up, like all the, 
uh, that everybody's uh, passed from this uh, stage uh, knows. But I was really no symptoms at all. I said, wow, my energy levels rise. I was running in the morning. I didn't drink any coffee, no alcohol for sure. And then I said, okay, I'm going to do this for eight months. Not going to be one month. Eight months straight raw vegan. 80-10-10 diet. Then I had very good energy levels. I was very happy with my life in general, but my period stopped. It was the first time that my menstruation stopped. As a girl that I didn't have so much healthy uh, connection with my period, I was kind of happy. I was like, oh, that's and, fine. <laughs> and, and, how, and how old were you at that time as well? Just I, was, be I was 25. I'm, yes, I'm now uh, 31. I yeah. was 25. It was in 2000. Uh, sorry. Yes, I was uh, 25. Yeah. Uh, 2014. And then uh, as my period stopped and I was studying Western price information because as a dentist, I was finished my, my degree in um, the, the, uh, the, the, the dentistry school. Uh, sorry. I realized Western Price did amazing investigation. I fell in love with this guy, but he said, veganism is not sustainable. I didn't find any civilization that actually eats, does, doesn't eat any more products. And oh my God, this effect, like broke my heart. <laughs> and I said, no, yeah. um, I, I'm sorry, that, but I still, well, I kept eating fruits, a lot of fruits, vegetables, but I eat fish once a week and eggs and raw, raw cheese. Not raw milk, because I know that it's very good, but I couldn't find. Anyway, I, my parents came back, Danny, that, that's the truth, you know, like so, I, my parents so... So, so you did it for eight months, like you said, and then you started eating these different animal products and then, yeah, yeah, carry on. Yeah. So I, I introduced this, uh, no meat, just fish once a week and my period came. But anyway, I was eating lots of fruits anyway. My, my breakfast was seven bananas, um, you know, my lunch, one kilo and a half of apples. <laughs> and, and then like uh, roughly <clears throat> in 2014, uh like march or april well i i don't know well but i i have this you know my mind was shift already to raw veganism even though i was reading western price information which is like so so amazing um i was already like converted i i felt now like converted like a religion you know like yes raw veganism and all my friends saying no this is not so healthy sorry okay hold on and my family no but I was actually I didn't have any symptoms that was like the main reason you know but the long-term symptoms came after okay so I was back to raw vegan no no fish eggs uh, also not like I was you know a bit disgusting about eggs and um, when you switched to the animal foods, how long did you experience with like the raw cheese and the fish? How long before you went back to raw veganism did that last for you? I, w the period I was having incorporated animal products, yeah, I yeah. don't know, spent like maybe five months, six yeah. months uh, on, on eating eggs and, and fish and, and some steamed vegetables. Yeah. vegetables and, because yeah. I was really raw so I cooked a bit but yeah so you did start to notice some benefits from like having yeah. fruits and then some animal foods but like you said you yeah. just just become very dogmatic and it's just like yeah. it's just like no 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 this is not good for me even though western price is telling me and even though my body feels better my head is telling me no I've got to stick to raw yeah. veganism because it's the best thing yeah yeah I really take it that very seriously no also I was like uh, re re reading the books from uh, other raw vegan uh, gurus and watching videos and I, I start making speeches about this. I was teaching people how to eat in this way in my city back in Porto in Portugal. Then how I tend to I start to travel. I went to then I met you in Thailand. But anyway, it, all of this time when I start traveling and I left the animal products. Uh, that I was eating that time, well, I started having crazy symptoms then. Like I started having lots of itches in my skin. I, I started being more more sneak, skinny. 
uh, my mind disturbed, you know, brain fog, uh, very negative thoughts, like, um, wow, it, it was very, very intense. It, it comes more and more. At that point, I remember in Australia, I was doing the liver queen because I, I start not incorporating things, but taking out food. My, the main reason was the food, not like I was, so I took out this and that. I was doing just a food, um, one meal, one diet, one fruit meal, you know, very. Yeah, modern meals. Modern meals, taking a lot of uh, omega vitamins, uh, well, and then I start having fevers every three days. Every three days, I had like this crazy fever that embodied my body. And then I said, come on, I need to do something. <laughs> I, I'm going to like, I don't know what this is going to end it up. So I start to fast. I start to do this fasting journey. I start five days fasting, just water. Then in Thailand, when we met, I did the 10 days um, water fasting. And this helped me so much. I was so happy. I was happy again and I could think clearly. And oh my God, life is amazing again. I, and But when I come back to it, I have a lot of troubles in my digestion. My gut was like just falling apart, diarrhea, constipation. I was addicted to enemas. I was doing enemas every single day or uh, it's because I couldn't proper, I, I cannot do the function of. Uh, yes. Yeah, so it sounds like you do, did what a lot of people did. You got onto this diet for health reasons and it helped you yes. at first, but then things started to really go downhill. So then you're trying to, instead of change the diet and saying the diet's not working, you just think you have to do more detoxification because you're toxic and you need to cleanse more and cleanse more and cleanse more. So you okay, just went so on this whole like orthorexia detoxification extreme pathway. Because what's happening, Danny, and this is why I really want to make this interview to you, uh, with you, because to bring this awareness, uh, because I was following the right, like the doctor, doctors, you know, the Dr. Mars. Well, I'm not gonna yeah. say names, but, but uh, I mean, they say like, oh, if you have this, it's the purification. It's one. It's uh, you are detoxifying. Go, go deeper. Yeah. Uh, Detox <laughs> symptoms. <laughs> Yeah. Never. It's a roller coaster of of detox, never ending story. It's uh, you become in that loop. I was reading about that. I was searching. I thought the best information. I was not listening to anyone, and <clears throat> so I ended up fasting more and more until the point I was in India. I did the Vipassana course, which also man was amazing. But I ended up being in that loop again. So after the Vipassana, again, more, more five days without uh, eating, uh, because in Vipassana, my body, like, I had, like, fever. Uh, my body was falling apart, like, totally. Um, so I did enemas. Every time I do enemas, I felt better, of course. But, well, uh, well, after this time in India, I went to Nepal. And then I said, okay, I was, I'm going to spend 21 days no no eating because i know that 21 is a it's a good number like it's a shifting number well i enter these orthorexies like that you know like you become really obsessed to purification if you think this is the way um and i really even thought i, I could live by just my breath breath breatharian uh, yeah. but then uh after this 20 day well i eat I didn't, I didn't eat in these 21 days. I just de drink uh, watermelon juice for the first days and in the end. Uh, but I was already very skinny when I started. That, that was the main problem. I was already, I don't know, maybe 55. And then I ended up being 39. No, I, wow. I don't know. Then, I, but at the end, I, I was 38, yeah. 39. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they're going to see in the images that I'm going to be putting up, you can see that she just ended up getting so thin. It, yeah. It's like someone, yeah. if you look at like someone that was in the Holocaust, like literally or a concentration camp, like is really, really extreme. So it's like, yeah, so I guess what was going on for you, even though you were like healing, like getting certain benefits at the time and then it was going up and down, I guess like 
where would you say where you were just so programmed even though your body was breaking down and you're getting slimmer it was just like you believed that it was just part of the detoxification process is what you needed to go through yeah totally and my friends i had some friends with me at that time they were not fasting and they tell me sada come on uh you need to eat come on you 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 are like disappearing and i said no this is this is this is part of it i'm i'm okay i was very optimistic then yeah actually i i'm very optimistic by nature but at that time i was like no i i felt so strong i put my backpack was more heavier than me i went to the north of india that i'm sell uh, where the uh, well me like the mountains well and then alone in the trains oh, of wow. india uh, i was just okay i start eating in nepal two days of eating just papaya or watermelon just one fruit very very little then i start traveling and uh, while well, in the i i found myself in delhi like uh, like what i'm doing here you know like like all the pollution all the noise uh all the crazy people the cows the monkeys and i said what am like and then i start to having the first time panic attacks I, until that time i didn't have any well, i didn't know what was that people tell me panic attacks what is that mm, like tachycard you know and then i yeah. went to the mountains where like it's a hippie village many yoga ashrams it's amazing i was there in the room with the mountains uh trying to incorporate food slowly uh doing enemas again because my body was just uh after that couldn't you know absorb any nutrients and then i said uh i don't know what's going on with me i'm having really tachycardia like paranoia more and more i went to a clinic uh to see with doctors a uh, ayurvedic clinic not a conventional one and they said they they really literally look at me and they didn't know what to do like <laughs> <laughs> they said well, um well you know um thank you good luck and then i went to yeah I'm, now i laugh but it's like man yeah. crazy you know I, like my my life is just like really and then okay two two weeks after i went on the airplane to portugal on the airplane because um i don't know the the name actually but i was having not pro- proper function of my body so my legs start swelling a lot it was like so swell swelling wow. you know like very wall because of the pressure you know when you go up and you are where you have not minimum functions of your body you can really have um b- big edema like i did edema yeah, yeah, yeah. wow and then when i arrived to portugal there was all my family there because it was a celebration like uh, a family celebration they look at me and it's like it was a shocking because i didn't know i was kind of lying you know i was like trying to uh... not tell the truth and then my father looked at me you know my mother well anyway now i have this sorted out and i have this uh, already gone and, through and, but and this time and, was very very strong yeah and how did your parents react when they saw you then well, how did they feel emotionally did they show a lot of concern no yeah they cry they they couldn't look at me prop like my my mother is a in conditional love you know it's mother she she will uh, let's 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 well uh, let's eat <laughs> let's recover let's uh, go to a proper place we went to a beach house i spent there four months recovering and yeah but it was a bit shocking a bit no i mean a lot of shocking i was 40 kilos you know i was never had problems with food before i never i was like this uh, good student good i mean all my life was perfect until the time i started to cure myself well ended up in this roller coaster of of uh diets uh, special the veganism uh, i think was like the most triggering thing in my journey yeah. So then I have uh, these pictures with my boils because uh, I was uh, I was so immune depressed Danny that uh, my body was couldn't like uh, everything was uh, sensitive I was very sensitive to any bacteria I mean we have bacteria <laughs> all the time running out you know fungus but at this time I I I I develop MRS uh, sorry in English it's like MS uh, oh, uh, oh, 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 yeah 
yeah, the bacteria very resistant. Yes, it's so, uh, M MRSA, is it called? Yes. Possibly yes. staph infection. And yeah, you're seeing this photo here, like her leg got so bad. Like it's like, what you're saying is like, it just seems that your body just like couldn't deal with anything anymore. It was just like, it was breaking down left, right and center. It's showing you very clear signs. It's like, whoa, yeah. Yeah. So yes, I, I had this infection, it was really bad. I had like 15 boils at the same time. 15 boils like one boil it hurts a lot it's a lot of pain one you know but I had 15 in one leg I, I couldn't walk for two weeks uh I was like oh my god I'm I'm what's going on like no, it's, it's it's getting worse it's getting worse and then I didn't want to take antibiotics I took a bit but then I was like this is like you know again the whole thing the whole paradigm that no antibiotics, nothing chemical, just again, bro, I need raw vegan, I need juices, I need um, um, supplements, I need, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I was so, still in that period. Yeah, I was still, I, will, I remember to, I need just to do now one week just eating oranges right now <laughs> to recover, you know. I, I was not yeah. eating anything else and doing emmas and and, and when that was going on with your leg, why did you think that was happening? Why did you think that that was going on with your legs? Like, what was your thought process around that? Well, actually... Because the, the reason why I ask that is, like, there's quite a few people. There's, uh, I named one YouTuber, Raw Bliss, and he's had that happen to him before, and he just says it's a really deep detoxification process going on. So is that okay. a similar thing for you, or what was it for you? So, okay, I'm, I'm really not honest. Uh, I had this family celebration. And I had a lot of air in my legs. I didn't take my air when I was in India, but I was with my, my family. I was in the celebration. I want to take my air off from my leg. Ah, the and hair, I, yeah. And I, I used the wax, Danny. I was uh, waxing. Yeah. And after the waxing, uh, some hours after, I see little points, red points in my skin. And then start the boils, you know, that, that was a trigger. Actually, there was a reason for that. Uh, but uh, uh, it's curious, it was only the right leg. The left leg, I just did, I just had one boil at, at that point. But I had like 15 boils and they were growing up. In one week, they grow up like, but the first, before the waxing, appear in my foot. Just one foot without waxing. This was the trick. Okay. One week after I arrived to India, I had one boil in my foot. I never had a boil before in my life. I just see pictures. People say ah, it hurts a lot, but I, I never imagined the pain, which, which is a lot of pain, you know? Like edema, like it's because it's like a, it's pus inside. You need to wait until the pus goes out. And then I did the waxing. So it from my foot went to my leg. A lot, a lot, a lot of boils. And then, well, uh, up and that, you know, I was resting, recovering, eating, uh, big, raw vegan, no eggs, no, no cooked food. I uh, was and then from, from one part went to another, like from the lower part of the leg went to upper part. Wow. And then to my, to my back, I had in my back lots of scars and I couldn't sleep proper. And also here in the... Ah, the... uh, yeah yeah in my here is a, a big one well well then it really i i and, fr and, and from the photos it just looks like someone that is just like the body looks like it's eating itself literally yeah. it looks like it's decomposing it, it, exactly it's what i think it happened uh nowadays people ask me if i was bitten for a sh sh uh, sh shark by shark yeah. can you imagine because my leg I have like a 20 wow. scars, big scars in my, my right leg. And I said, yes, the shark of my mind is what I think now. Uh, ah, I, yeah. It's a silent shark. Uh, you didn't see like this little monster because it's, it's a mind disorder, like orthorexia. But not only orthorexia itself, but combined with this, what this dogmatic veganism and purification journey it's it's uh it can be really life treatment uh condition which yeah. which happened to me 
you know, for three months, I couldn't put weight. I was on, on the weight and the balance every day. I, I it was so hard for me putting weight. Huh. So hard, Danny. Like, uh, people cannot imagine. Like, people normally you say, ah, it's hard to lose yes. weight. But to put weight when you are so sick, um, it was uh, for me the main goal at that time. Yeah, because it's uh, yeah, because I guess what happened for you was just like, even though you're eating a raw vegan diet, it wasn't giving you what you needed, and you weren't necessarily assimilating everything because your whole digestive system had just started to break down and not function optimally as well. Yeah, totally. And then, well, what helped me the most at that at that recovery time uh, was uh, eating more. Yes, but exercise. Then I start exercise again, running on the beach, swimming. I remember the first time I did like swimming in the beach. Wow, well, was like, wow, well, I can move, you know, I can, my body is moving again. It was coming out from the bed completely, you know. Um, then I start to run, to do bicycle, yoga again. Um, yeah, and you were still... Was- and you were still raw vegan at this point. You hadn't switched back to animal foods yeah. yet. No, no, no. That was in 2016. Yeah. Uh, I was I, I was raw vegan. Not eggs. Even not eggs. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, some, yeah, some quinoa, some good grains, you know. I was eating uh, cooked. Actually, not, not strict raw, but yeah, veganism. Um, then, yeah, it took me like four months to recover. Um Completely. I did clay, you know, I put everything in my like clay, honey, propolis, garlic, everything that you can if, if imagine like to cold baths actually for, for my for my uh, happiness, you know, for my uh, vital conditions was amazing. Also the ocean, also the, the good um, the good energy from the beach, you know, nature. I was alone. I was pretty much alone. I was with my mother first and then with Denise and then some friends came, came visit, visit me. I was, I didn't want so many people around me. I was very sensitive. And, and, and yes, I wish at that time, because I didn't know about orthorexia, you know, that the problem about yeah. like eating disorders is like, you, you cannot even, um recognize you are you have like a eating disorder but yes uh detoxification disorder i mean uh it, it's, it's very mental you, you know yeah uh, for sure but um i just know orthorexia just some months ago about this term orthorexia uh, and okay. raw veganism like it's correct when i discover orthorexia uh, what is actually i discover also that raw veganism is for me, was a, a food disorder itself, yeah. um, and, and uh, yeah, and also veganism. So, so that was the journey until until 2016. Then um, slowly, I was eating some eggs, um, you know, fish. I I once in a while I eat fish. I didn't like was buying fish or you know, and doing. But when someone cooked. I was, but you know, very no sugar, no cakes, no bread, you know, like this very, uh, like also it, it's not so good for the mind to be so strict because for me, the main reason of the orthorexia disorder is I want to take control of, of the things. Uh... You know, I want to take control of my life, my situation. <clears throat> so by no, by knowing what I was eating and know that that's, the best diet in the world, the most purification <laughs> diet. I was happy, you know. I felt safe. Is it illusion? Yeah. Ah, okay. So it was meeting a lot of um, emotional needs for you and certain needs yeah. you just had generally as a human being. Yeah. So, so actually, also developed a binge eating disorder uh, at the point okay. when I was recovering because I was afraid not to put weight again. As I told you, like, uh, it, it took me a long time to gain weight, to be again with my muscles, because I, I lost all my muscles. Like, I, I lost, <laughs> like, uh, so, uh, the, also, I know, now, also, now uh, today I know what is BG eating, which is like eating um, for emotional uh 
and also for me fear of not putting weight again and oh. I couldn't sleep proper also in the night I had some insomnia um, so in the night I was eating also you know like uh, trying to do everything to put one weight again but then I discovered no it's just by eating I need to do something for my mind you know so the sports running swimming was like uh, was what really killed me you know um, but ah, okay. the, the, I think the orthorexia keeps going and also this dogmatic veganism mindset keep, kept going until some months ago. That, that's, that's what I, I know. And for me, it's really um, very life uh, ch uh, changing experience. Yeah, uh, sure. Start eating a, a meat again because I saw that I was still in that paradigm and very um uh i really want to defend that yeah. Do dogmatic yes yeah. uh, because anyways 2017 i started traveling again i went to brazil um well I, I went to travel but i was also with friends that were vegan uh fans that that's also the reason you know your circle you are what your circle about even though yeah. you want to try and other things, but you ended up doing what other people are, I mean, your closest your, friend, yeah, friends. Yeah, yeah. Uh, even though I was craving, but I, by me, that time was so crazy that I have a lot of digestion problems. So that, that's the thing. The, the, the thing, okay, my period came in 2018. Uh, by that time, I was eating, after three years and half, I had almost four years without menstruation. Um, oh, wow. This was also something I, I really want to talk, especially for girls, because when the fire stopped, Danny, I thought it was normal, you know, because yes. there is some information in the, inter in the you know, this by doctors, like very good uh, articles, uh, says that menstruation is a disease. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. Yeah, certain um, raw veganism, fruitarian uh, teachers out there and a lot of these detoxification people out there, yeah, for sure they say this. Yeah, so you enter in this uh, loop of uh, believing, fake believing, fake beliefs, you know, um, it's it's so crazy. So I, I, didn't, I didn't have like so much worries about my period until... Uh, one year after, uh, because I see my other friends that I, they were so happy with the period, you know, my, my girlfriends, they were so connected with the menstrual, menstrual cycle. I want to be like them. Um, and besides that, I know that I was sick. So it was not just the period, it was the whole yeah. thing. So when, when came in 2018, the period, I was not still eating meat. I, would eat, I was eating meat, uh, fish again, once in a while. Uh, some eggs, well, so I cannot say it was the meat, but actually I know now for sure that I had, be, like, uh, I would get my periods uh, faster if I incorporate meat in my diet. Uh, okay, so, so yeah, when you switch back to the animal foods, the last time you just mentioned, so you switched yeah. switch back to mostly fish, eggs, yeah. and then you started trying mm -hmm. some meat, and how... And how long did you experiment with that for, roughly? Um, what I experiment? I mean... Yeah, like, uh, what sort of duration? After you really went down here and you started doing sports, how long did you start experimenting with these different animal foods for? So I, I experiment uh, since November. I, I eat, uh, as I told you, I went to a restaurant alone. I ate uh, ribs. <laughs> uh, that was um, very transformative. Um, also back to sports well this I did in the last two years a lot of sports okay. but the, the the food eating like the incorporating meat again uh, mostly in my well every day I was eating meat or fish uh, it was the digestion man really Danny one thing I thought I was is gone it's forever I'm not gonna get my gut uh, function yeah. doing uh, working again, I was or bloated or with farts. Like, how is possible to live like that? I thought, you know, I, and I really want to heal myself. That's why I, I start to be open the box and try different things. 
because part of me knows that I cannot have the same um, the other other results doing the same things. This is uh, this is the main thing, you know, part of me. But part of me still want to believe that. Uh, vegetarianism is the way and uh, you're going to be a really bad person if you eat meat you know this kind of beliefs and dogmas that uh, yeah. was not helping my health at all so my digestion it's 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 so important you know because it's your us it's collect it's uh, related with your yeah. mental uh state um you know uh, it's where you produce the happy hormone serotonin dopamine so being bloated all the time, I, I didn't want this anymore, even though I had the period, even though I, I could want weight, even though I got my life functioning better. Yes. But then this digestion, it's a big topic. It's a big thing. Yes. Yeah, so, so you started to resolve most of the issues, but the digestion thing was just still not on point for you as of yet with the animal food being reincorporated into your diet. Yeah, so uh, since November, I have gone to bathroom every day, uh, like never oh, before. Wow. I'm, I'm, um, I put one weight actually, like, uh, uh, but I mean, it's good weight. I'm not, I, I don't think I'm fat, you know, like, but yeah. for me, it's good because I was uh, very skinny all the time. So it's not, um, it's, it's a good thing for me. Uh, I, I have the body that I didn't have for, for many years. Um, and then I feel more more alive, better clarity thoughts, um, it, and also I had some is still uh, phone calls in my nail, my nails in my foot uh, to the, to resolve, and actually it's really uh, helping, Danny. It, it's amazing. Ah, okay. Even that, nice. Um, I I had this for a long time. Well, when I started the raw vegan, and it, like. You see that there is some things that happen to your body that you just see in the long term, or you get used to. I was getting used yeah. to be bloated. I get used to my phone nails. I, I get used to be not so good levels of energy. Um, so when you uh, in November started getting your digestion back on track, like how long had you started? How long had you been experimenting with? animal foods until it started resolving your digestive issues and did you have to make some modifications to the diet to resolve your digestive issues was there any changes if i uh if i like i, I yeah, changed I, to an animal food and i yeah, use so, the carnivore diet so, so yeah when you got to november it was november when you switched to a carnivore diet is that yes. what started resolving your digestive issues fully yes uh, in December, ah, okay. well, uh, more, more, yeah, no, uh, l l late November, December, because I was um, curious about uh, your videos, your up uploading videos, like you're, you're talking about that, also other people, and I said, wow, because what really appealed me, triggered me, like, like really uh, vegan, like people that. Uh, spend I know that spend lots of time with the veganism and they were defending suddenly they start to be carnivore and they look better they are more better so well Sarah come on at, at least I need to try this is obvious you know it's it's in my face <laughs> or I accept it and I embrace this this message which is so clear to me or I keep in this illusion in my mind saying the meat is bad for forever and I don't evolve so life is for evolving and you, you're you not the same person that you were yesterday. That's fine, completely fine. So for me, it was a really a mind, like mind shifting experience because, um, you know, in my family, in all my close friends, I was defending by heart, by, by you know, the still defending when I was sick. You know, how can you defend something when, when you didn't show it? Yeah. How can, is, is impossible, but... Uh, Anyway, this that, that that was a thing, um, and when I started eating it again, you know, like alone, and I I was well, it's like what I was missing in my life, like was really mind blowing experience, and I, so I told my you started 
So when you started trying the meat for the first time and going towards a carnivore diet, yeah, how, how did it affect you from like the first experience? What did you notice? Um, did you notice the quite instant changes okay. and then also changes no, no, over no. a long period no, of time? No, no, it, it, it took a time. I, I know it, but my body is a chronic deficiency, deficiency uh, yeah, from, yeah. from nutrients, protein, so on, so on, that didn't have for many years, so I knew it. But I, it was, well, some things I just see now, today, after four months of starting, five, five months of starting in the journey. Uh, and, but some things I, I noticed at the moment. Actually, with my digestion, I was kind of constipated at the beginning, you know? I couldn't, okay. well, it, well, it's one of the side effects of going back to carnivore. Um, uh, like, experiment yeah, yeah. carnivore, because... Mm, yes, yeah, so it's like um, you hadn't uh, eaten meat for so long, so it was like your gut microbiome had to adapt to the new foods, like the meat, because you yeah. hadn't had it for so long. So it was just like you had some digestive issues at first, but then did you find that it yeah, ended up resolving? Yeah, I because I searched again, I went to forums, and I see that when you try carnivore for the first time, basic, especially if, if you come from a vegan um, diet no, or well, base base planted diet. Uh, you you will um, experiment some like even two days without going to the bathroom, or three. But the most amazing thing I knew it. So I knew it. My intuition told me that I was doing correctly, because I didn't feel bloated, Danny. I I didn't go to the bathroom. That's uh... correct. But I was not bloated. I was like my belly was uh, even more uh, skinny. You know, like. Uh, I just say in English like lean. Yeah, just uh, yeah, just complete that. Yeah. Yeah. Then 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 when I was uh, going to the bathroom with a vegetarian diet and I still was doing enemas until uh, six months ago. Imagine not every day like this, um, but I needed to do it because I, I found that I was not you know I need to do something and I know enemas help me so. Um, but when I was start eating meat, yeah, this is one of physically I felt like not going to bathroom for three days, and then I said, okay, relax, Sarah. It's the body adapting itself to the new, new, uh, different food. You know, like it, it's all different. Um, so it's it's good to take it slow as well, like step by step. But I decided to do like just you know just meat, fish, eggs, like like the proper diet, not mixing with fruit or veggies to yeah. see the difference in my body because I, I like to experiment i like to see really what's going on with my mind and body yeah. by doing that otherwise i don't know what's helping me then yeah. when i eat fruit again well when i was doing carnivore and eat fruit again i was bloated uh. i had hearts <laughs> so wow what's so crazy and then um of course if i do I have digestion problems. My mind is not so clear. I, I had some issues with thinking and making proper decisions. Yes. Yeah, so when you went to the carnival diet, did you stick to it for a while and then you thought you'd try fruits and see if it would make you feel better because you thought that you needed them? Or, yeah, what, what was your reason for trying them again? And once you had a bad experience, did you end up just, like, removing it for a period of time? The fruits? Yeah. Um, what, yeah, what uh, she, yeah. Yeah, because I really uh, actually, <laughs> you know, when you open like a bottle that is closed for a long time, like with a good wine that you want to drink for a lot, like was the same for me with me, you know, I, I love it so much <laughs> ah. that, that I said, I want that every meal that I want to, I'm going to have will be me because I was missing these flavors and these chemical reaction that gave to my body you know what i mean i want to experiment different meats i want to experiment because um i spend a lot of time in this uh, restrict restrictive diet uh, i experiment all the fruits i was the, the fruit fanatic well i i, I had this so um, i i ended up yeah doing all the meals meat because when yes when i tried fruit i was having some issues in my digestion um but then like nowadays to like in the normal day i also eat fruits and that's fine yeah. 
Yes. So yeah, you did. So when you switched to the carnivore, you did try at one point having fruit cautious digestive issues, and then you said I think from correct, you did strip carnivore for like two months. Yeah. And then yeah. tried to start incorporating some fruits and other foods. Yeah. For me, because uh, especially now I want to incorporate kind of, I don't say everything, but to be more open because I I came from from a yeah. perspective of being very restrictive, very extreme to my body, to my mind. Um, and I don't like one thing I, I decide to myself, then when this, uh, when I heal myself and, and still it's a process, you know, after orthorexia, some people say that it's five years until you, you really heal from your mind, from everything, all the process. And I went to a deep darkness uh, levels of, of my mind. Uh, so Something I really, I would just want balance. Yes. Uh, so rather than putting yourself in a box again and giving yourself like yeah. a very strict label, because I, I know I, that it can it can be easy when I switched, it can be very easy to put yourself in another box, which I do label the diet certain things at certain points for so other people understand. But yeah, it's really good that you had that awareness and it's good that you're sharing that with people because so many people can end up trading one box for another box. And then you can hold on to that box for too long and it affects you in a negative way, just like the last box did. Yes. Otherwise, I will end it up in the same mistake I did in the past, you know, like uh, in identifying myself with food. Food yes. was my identity. You know, I'm not Sarah anymore. I'm not Portuguese. I'm Ravi. <laughs> you know, that's yeah. like putting a label <laughs> on your on your head. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, and and that's so sick, you know. That's so not not healthy at all. Um, and yeah, it's good. Yes, you, you tried. I, I I even say like it's good to be raw vegan for a month to be a detox. Well, but for a period of time, you have a detoxification. You also see that you can you can be you can pass through that. It's very good for detachment, not be attached to something. Uh, yeah or a fasting actually um but then don't be like stick to that like i did yes yeah. so would you say that it managed to, obviously a lot of your decisions before were based on what your brain was thinking what you'd heard from other people would you say now with what's gone on with you and you've started healing yourself do you started to listen more to your internal self more of your body rather than your mind and letting your mind follow your heart so to speak so you can make some really wise cho choices rather than listening to what everyone else is telling you. This is the best diet. This is the best diet. Your head turns is the best diet. Yeah. Would you say that yeah. that was a, an experience that you've gone through? Yes, totally. Actually, uh, I don't want to be anti anything like uh, against any any diet. But for me, like when you put the name diet at something, uh, actually you are already a box like. Uh, and then if you don't do it, you are like, uh, your life doesn't go good. Uh, your day, it's messed up. If I don't eat my, that, that thing, you know, you ended up being very um, psychotic. Yeah. <laughs> That's the word, I think. Um, yeah, that, that, um, I, 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 yeah. I was bringing food to other people's house, Danny. Um, people invite me to dinners. I was bringing my, my bag with apples to eat there. You know, I was not eating to rest. I, I came to the, that, that point. Um, but today I embrace myself and I love it because I, I'm, I'm, I'm here to talk to at least to inspire other people to do it. Uh, well, it's, it's, what is, it's, it is what it is. Uh, no yeah. regrets, but learning, you know, I just, I don't want to going from a dogmatic point of view from veganism to going now to a dogmatic point <laughs> of view of carnivore, which yeah, I that's... know that there is also another carnivore gurus and yeah. So it sounds like you started to just you've started to form the healthiest relationship that you could have with food again that you had not had for quite a while. Yeah, which is so good. And it's really, really good that you share that with people. Yeah. And uh, sometimes I eat cakes and that's totally fine. You know, I'm not going to die with a heart attack or uh, I'm going to have any rashes. Uh, because sometimes it's uh, you're already suffering before you eating. Like, I'm not going to eat that because it's going to. You know, no, it's yeah. just relax. It's something, one of the things I learned to get my period back, just relax. 
uh, eat more, eat more, eat whatever it thinks that you think is bad to break this um, uh, strict mindset that um, because yeah. it's what, as you said before, like I ended up before the beginning was I want to heal something and I, I had the success. I could heal my actually uh, with this story of my chronic pains, it's gone. Then I didn't have any sciatic pain, uh, wow. articulation, uh, uh, pain in the articulation. I'm really pain free, no pills, no supplements. Um, I feel so much free now. Like, but wow. I had passed through all of these signs because I, I ended up beginning. I want to heal a disease. I was successful and I want to keep going. Yeah. Uh, and then ended up being a disease. Yeah. So, yeah. So now, yes, after so, six so, years after the beginning, I can say that, uh, well, it's a long journey. Yeah, for sure okay. it is. And yes, yeah, so you, so after doing Carnival for two months, um, you've been doing, if I remember correctly, just so people are just aware of like fully what you're doing in your diet. So you did that for two months and then you've been eating normally some fruit in the morning and then meat on its own later in the day. And then if you want the occasional thing like a cake or this or that, you're yeah. like, you have it, and and, and, and would yeah yes yeah, so that and and would you say that when you do eat a food, say like certain things that may be a bit of a processed food, like a cake, that you listen to your body. So if you do feel bad from it, will you just discontinue eating that food, or would you just keep eating that food even though it's affecting you in a negative way? Um, no. Every time I eat, not not every time I eat a cake, but sometimes I have this thought that I'm I'm. I'm uh, giving sweetness to my soul, you know. I'm giving this as a ritual to break my dogmatic, okay. uh, strictive thing that cake and sugar it's it's the devil. Yeah. Uh, you know, like uh, sometimes I really make this. Think, you know, okay, Sarah, it's made with lots of love. My, these people giving me this, it's and totally fine for me. This helped me so much, Danny, because um, for two years, and like also my family I had a bit traumatic experience with me because I've made feel them bad of it. Not me, I was not eating, but I was trying to convert everybody. That, that was the main problem of me, one of the problems of this journey is like you feel so good and so happy and so wow everybody needs to try this yeah for <laughs> sure that you, you try to spread all of this information to a lover even people that don't even give a shit for, for you're saying and you're spending your energy and that that's uh, what happened actually my mom follows me and she healed and she got better uh, fortunately i have a uh, good feedbacks okay not but uh, nowadays, I still like I have conversations with my father, especially my father that he's not, you know, he loves fruits, but he, he loves meats. He's a meat eater. He has cows, uh, goats. Um, he he says, Sarah, you are so different now. You are the other person. Because when everybody was eating, I was like, or say something, what you eating? What you like, you know, it's so bad, like. Oh my God, it's really a, a disease, yeah. you know, like my disease when you try to um, involve everybody on your journey. And, and anyway, with the, with the cakes and with the processed food uh, or fries, you know, like this, this, um, of like, because fried food is something I was not tolerating at all. Like it was no, please. <laughs> but nowadays I, I do this and I feel so much better. And so, yes, I, I'm also studying mind pro programming, you know, uh, how your emotions, because we are, first, it's, it's emotional, and then it's physical, affect. So if you eat something, you are like, oh, this is amazing, it's good for me, I'm going to be so grateful. That, that's fine, your, your body observes, your body is happy, digests good. If you're eating already with the regret, oh, I need to, or many people that does, you know, I'm going to eat this cake, but tomorrow I'm going to run one hour and that's totally fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or, 
Yeah, or you go and do an NMR or some fasting afterwards and you feel bad about it, you beat yourself up, you feel really bad about it, and it's just a really, like, downward spiral experience of eating it. Yeah. Yeah, for me, orthorexia is the same with the bulimia, but bulimia, you purge. Orthorexia, yeah. you do enemas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's it's a, a it's the same. One is from up, other for down. Yeah. It's sick. Uh, you're addicted to um, like uh, I don't know, and it all comes with the self image because what where starts the problem? It's like self love. Self, you don't love yourself. You start you start to uh, binging on fruit on on food because um, you you actually lose this feeling of loving yourself you know for me yeah. for me what was my my experience i say honestly like from from deep heart i tell you this you know yeah um, so it's like the diet helps you so much but it came came to a point where you started to realize that you also needed to start meeting your emotional needs loving yourself because there was possibly some self-sabotage patterns there or destructive so patterns with your food choices and uh, it's so good that you started to have this sort of like spiritual, emotional experience go on that went in alignment with the diet and you started to just wake up to all these things because that is very part of someone's healing experience with anything, whether it's an addiction with certain substances or food or any unhealthy eating disorders or anything. It's just like the more you start to love yourself, it sounds like that's going on for you, the more you could start feeling better from the food you eat. And something that was really good that you said, and, and I experienced this before in the past, is like once you start f feeling really positive towards the food, thinking really positive thoughts, being grateful and thankful for the food, a lot of foods that used to affect you in a negative way do not anymore. So it sounds like you just started to, yeah, just have the healthiest relationship with food, but with yourself at the with same yourself. time. Yeah. Because the change is before you change yourself, and then you can um, change the outside. But before is the internal. It's, it's, it's the same with people. When you are with people that you don't love or you don't like, and they are just toxic and poisoning your life, but you don't care. You just feel good because you feel good with yourself. And that, that's that's totally fine. You know, like I, I I mean I'm I'm in peace with myself. Um, yeah. So the same with food. Uh, it's Wow, it's for me. Uh, it, it's been a trip, but for me, I just I think I know I'm sure this happened when I started eating meat again. Uh, I had this already started out with cakes or, or fried food, uh, like uh, I was in peace with with this, but with meat, wow, was another journey, uh, and, and not yeah. only mentally, but because I was actually craving, as I told you, I was. Uh, Ended up thinking about or, or seeing people eating meat, and I said, "Oh, if I want to try, oh, I want to try." But of course, you know, when you spread the word and you you are you are afraid, again, the fear, the fear comes and sabotages you because you are afraid. Oh, what can the people think of me? Um, yeah. That I I was so like uh, spread love, um, spread word about raw veganism. What can the people think about me? This, this is like one of the things I need to break. I don't care what people are about. First, I need to try and see what's going on. And then I, I that's fine. At, at least I let myself to open to a new possibilities. Yeah. To try new things. Yes, it was a very quite in, sort of intense, interesting experience for you to go with, with eating the meat. Um, yeah. And, and would you and say the, it, and it's, Sorry, Say Danny. I just like, review. Yeah, you go. One one of the things I really appreciate from you, uh, even though we haven't talked so much for these years, um, but I see your videos in YouTube, and the more honest we are with the world and uh, what's going on with us, um, yeah. it's hard. Of course, you are vulnerable. Vulnerable. You are exposing yourself, but the more uh, you are telling the truth like yeah you there's many lies 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 but truth is one is your truth is your experience yeah. it works it works okay go on yeah and it becomes part of your own self-healing experience to be able to voice and be authentic to yourself and other yeah. people it's a very good self-loving thing to do yeah
Totally, totally. You know, because I know people struggling right now. I know I can feel yeah. uh, people still struggling because of this dogmatic veganism or even vegetarianism, okay? Um, not only veganism, it's, well, because Western Price really saw that there was no civilization, even though we really want to believe in that. No, this is the truth. It's not sustainable for the earth and for our, our bodies. Um, so uh, I think um, it's time also with this, uh, well, coronavirus stuff, it's really time mm -hmm. to be honest first with, us, with ourselves and then with the world. Um, show up what really you are and what you are experienced because actually it's, uh, if it doesn't result and if meat will not be a good thing, I would not say it, but it's true. It's been, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. been amazing. I, I I'm, I'm stunned, you know, and also because it helped me understanding the, the inver environmental part of it, like the ethic. It really yeah. helped me because it's something very, I'm very rational and I really needed to understand what benefits I give to the world by eating meat because one of the reasons I started being vegetarian was because I thought uh, I was saving the world by eating corn and, and <laughs> plants, you know, I'm, yeah. oh, the world is much better now. No, <laughs> it's a big lie. And so you started to, so you started to also say, yeah, when you was on like the raw, raw veganism journey, you always think of health reason, but also there's, you was aware of like yeah. what the vegans say about the environmental impact. But then you started to learn that started eating meat and finding out actually the plant-based diet necessarily isn't the vegan diet isn't the best environment and actually eating meat is actually can be very good for the environment and other animal foods unlike what a lot of brainwashed vegans out there believe that's it you know okay so it all starts before raw, raw vegan i started eating um vegetarian in 2012 ah. by watching earthlings uh food ah. matters all of these documentaries that's the whole thing okay uh -huh. so I, I because of ethical thing uh because i didn't have any problem well i had these issues on my body but i didn't think about i can heal with food not at that time yeah. after a year i i start going deep into into the subject and i met some raw vegan people and then i start the the thing uh because yeah. of of actually because of healing my problem uh of of health um and nowadays wow uh getting to know this vegan agenda like the brainwash um program wow make me feel so uh, mind-blowing you know because wow this world is so so crazy, Danny. What's going on here? Yeah, yeah. So it's you like know? you it sounds like you had the similar experience to so many people out there. It's just like all of a sudden you had a paradigm shift and the vegan goggles came off, and you're like, "Whoa, what is this whole world? What are the lies that I've been sold? What, what is going on?" <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> okay, it's true that the meat. Uh, okay, we don't have. It's good to support grass-fed meat. Yes. Yeah. Of course, this is for me still uh, I keep up. And here in Angola, uh, uh, my father has a lot of cows and goats. Can you imagine? Oh, and wow. I was I was against this this uh, business of my father. I told uh, him, "Oh, you are a bad person because you are have this, uh, you know, eating goats, uh, eating ki killing goats and killing cows." But actually, is is a passionate for animals. He treat them very well, and and of course, you know, like uh, there is a whole process to 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 have animals to wow. to rise up animals. And we have chickens in the garden here. We have ducks, rabbits, and still I didn't want to eat this when I came here to Angola. Once, well, I was traveling. When I came here, I was like, okay, even was so you know raised by us eating the best um, the best oh, food. Oh wow! No grains, yeah. you know. We, wow so you had access to like very high quality animal foods from a very young age and then you've gone back around on this whole loop and come back to it <laughs> yeah. 
you know, we have also good fruit here, mangoes, papayas, um, maracuyas, passion fruits. Uh, so for me, it was the paradise. Um, but what concerns to me, well, no, like really far away from me, you know, the smell, I was completely, um, <laughs> um, no, I didn't want that. Yeah. And then, and now it's the opposite, you know, I'm so happy to, and now I'm so much great. And also, is that, you know, I feel so much more connected with my family. Oh. Um, I feel so much more part of, of it, you know, I'm not just the, like, you know, the freaky, fruit freaky um, yeah. daughter that told me it's, but it's more, much more union. I get very closer. Wow. And so it's really improved your whole human connection, especially your family, yeah. which is like that on its own. Like one of the top fitting things for us to feel our best is community and connection. Like, yes. <laughs> You know, then it's so, it, it's, wow, it's the whole thing, you know, because I didn't agree before that you, you need to connect, the food connect us is the reason, because some people just connect because there is food. You can yeah. connect and be in the group of people, community, just uh, talking about good things, you know, but he, now I think... Um, uh, not extremes, you know, uh, you can just also connect to have a good chicken at Sunday uh, with all your, your family oh. and and have this as a as a ritual, as a good, healthy uh, uh, union moment for connecting. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And it is so good that you are like most people that pretty much everyone has interviewed they're like really are anti-factory farming and very like pro pasture raised most ethically sourced animal foods and it yeah it's, it's that's really good that you are someone for that yeah it's because a, a lot of people yeah a lot of people think factory farming is not a bad thing and, and so forth and would you say that at all like would you say that what were some of the positive things you got through going through this whole dark experience? Would you say that maybe possibly one of them was it helped you to end up being more health conscious, made you just to become a better person, learn things about yourself? Like what would you say that you gained from the whole experience that you've gone through? Oh, of course, I became more conscious. I, bec I become more... Um like at the, we are one you know at the same level like uh, you, you don't need um diets because diets separate us and the and the and objective the main goal is the union communion community uh, unity in common so this is so much like beyond everything like the moment of sharing food it's a big community union for me this is one of the most healing process like to get connected with my father we we uh, cook me together now you know it's like a moment of uh, and and besides that the union i feel much more better i feel yeah. uh i my muscle gain you know i feel much more uh uh my physically my my no more bloated I feel like um, I, I'm like, thankful for for this journey. Actually, I'm really I don't regret. No. Even though I passed through moments very hard, Danny, I didn't know how I came out from that. It was like coming out from a dark, dark, uh, bad trip, um, life bad trip, you know, not uh, whatever. But uh, and now ended up being eat meat again was. Uh, a, a spiritual changing actually it's yeah because uh you think ah no being eat, eating meat cannot be spiritual it, it's ah. no it's uh it's all other fallacy it's another belief which that doesn't have any uh background Validity. yeah verity yes right right oh, even the monks uh in india in whatever you know it's um and of course if uh, if it's good meat like I, I have it here or 
yeah, it's, I don't know. I'm, I'm so happy really of, of this journey. Yeah. And yeah, it's just ended up literally helping you to more feel your age, function to the best ability, feel alive, thrive. And so you can live your life to the fullest. So you can experience life as a yes. full human being and get to connect with people and do the things that you want to do and just be the best version of yourself and it's like and seeing the pictures of you and even looking at you now I, I like I remember where Sarah's at I didn't see her at skinniest but I've seen the photos and it's just like she just looks so much more alive and vibrant a lot of people say meat is dead food well if it's dead food why would it have healed her so much why would she be looking more alive and healthier <laughs> and vibrant than ever the proof is in the pudding we don't need no science to prove this she done her own experiment it's an anecdotal evidence from her but it's worked for her it's worked for me and many other people it's like it, it works it's like and yes it's, and it's so good that you are able to keep your mind open and be like right okay it took you a while to get there but inevitably just like me he's like right this isn't working i try it and you listen to your body and it started to work for you yeah yeah that, that's the thing you know like you just need to keep your mind open Otherwise, uh, well, well, all of the vegetarian eaters um, is like they want to be more free, take care of the animals, but they ended up being in the box. It's what I feel. And I'm not anti-vegetarian. I'm not anti-vegan. People do whatever they want. Uh, yeah. We are free human beings with a free will. This is our one uh, vantage that we have and to decide what we want. So what I want, I, I really, literally, I came to the point, I was so sick, so depressed, so life, there, there is no sense in this life, why I'm living, you know, even suicidal thoughts, Danny, I had. And, yeah. and don't came to me saying I did the veganism wrong. No, I was doing everything like the books, uh, was uh, whatever. I come to this point, I, I need to write, write, in a book, in my diary, because uh, one of the things that really helped me was writing all this time. I have all these the, the uh, of oh, the wow. feelings I was I was having in that moment in my in my diaries. Um, I said, "What I want? I want health. That, that's that's the main thing in the world. You know, I want to live. I don't want to survive. I, I was in the state of surviving. Each yeah, day, it's like it's, a suicide mission." Yeah, I, I was. Uh, it it looks like I was dr dr uh, dr dr drug addicted, alcohol addicted. I was uh, no. I was supposed to be the most healthy diet, organic, raw, vegan, alcohol, no cigarettes, no uh, nothing impure. And uh, yeah, that that's the thing. You know, I was really going. I. I going for this diet to be more pure but yeah. then i discover with a nephew my nephew was 10 years old the, uh, uncle and why you need to we didn't need to be more pure our spirit is already pure oh. we just need to embrace accept it so it's so beautiful this that he sent me at that time that we we need to purify ourselves we are already pure wow and this is like yeah wow. of course why wow, so much so much strength. Why so much uh, money spending in the crazy consult supplements, so on, so on, organic food, organic nothing. Uh, <laughs> and I, 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 I said, wow, I'm, life is, is passing through me and I'm just passive. I'm, I'm not doing nothing. You know, I, I said, so I wrote in my diary what I really want. I just want health. I just want balance. I want to live life fully. Um, because I was lying to myself that I was, uh, I mean, you know, I was lying to other people. Yeah, yeah, it's the best diet. No, come on, <laughs> prove it. If it's the best, prove it by your body, by your decisions, you know. <laughs> yeah, like... so, yeah, and that what happens so much, like people in the raw vegan journey, like you did, it's like, it's, it's not working for you, yet you're saying it's so good. There's so many people on social media platforms that are raw vegans that do the same thing. It's just like really crazy. And one thing I'd like to get back to is like, so we, yeah, a lot of people say that eating meat and animal foods makes you less spiritual. Have you found that it's made you less spiritual in any way, shape or form? No, no, at all, at all, um, at all. Like, 
I feel even, you know, I feel respect for the animal. I, I feel really uh, a lot of respect. I love them. Uh, but I, I need to accept our uh, my human condition. You know, my human is not being a vegetarian or if I need to live in this world with the human body, there is some certain, and of course, uh, there's some vegan people that can drive without supplements, but it's a little per percentage um, of the all, the, of yeah. everybody. And for me, it didn't work <clears throat> as much as I tried and ha hard, like from my heart, from my deep heart, I really want to, I didn't want to eat animals again, but now eating again, I don't feel less spiritual. Actually, it's the opposite. I feel as I feel better with myself. I feel more strong. My, my digestion is good. Um, I train every day. I don't get so much uh, tired in, uh, easily. Like I was getting, you know, I would train before, but I was getting tired more easily. I feel more spiritual because I'm more of my spirit. I I was I started doing what my spirit asked. Yeah, asked yeah, me. and my yeah. body was saying my my symptoms the symptoms i had um there were signs of the body or so, i mean it's, it's symptoms in the body but it's signs it's a message from the spirit saying what we really want to experiment so each yeah. organism it's it's organisms about uh maybe if you're doing good with a vegetarian go ahead <laughs> or if you think okay go ahead but re see it yourself look it think meditate and see if you're really doing good with that. Don't lie to yourself. This is the message I want to pass, you know? Yeah. Because sometimes we we want some, so hard something, you hold it that you cannot see uh, things, obvious things. <laughs> yeah, you just can't see things clearly or it's just like, no, 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 can't see it. Don't want to yeah. see it. Leave me in my religion. <laughs> don't don't say anything outside of my religion. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, and, and and that's really good that you say that because many people like they know something's not working and they just think that by using a band aid, whether it's doing some detoxification supplement, this and that, that's not my diet. It's not my diet. Like I've got my entity, identity built around this diet. Don't, don't. Oh, my ego wants to hold on to this. It's just like yeah, yeah. It happens yeah. To so many people. And and also, I hope this is a good message also for the people who eat who eats meat from all the life and wants to quit meat or, you know, um, even red meat, like, oh no, I, I want to be vegetarian, but I can't. Don't go. So <laughs> don't go, just be like, so, because you, you don't have to. So I, I see in YouTube, there is a lot of videos, how to turn to be vegetarian, how to quit meat, how to like so much bullshitting from like, uh, whatever, yeah. so much about these videos and not so little about how to start meat again. Why meat is good for you? Why is this happening? Yeah. Is, is any any political message behind there? Is any uh, brainwash program? Or, like, th th that's the real question. Yeah, um, for sure. It's, it sounds like what you're talking about. It's like, maybe you start to realize there is some sort of big vegan agenda going on and that maybe there's a lot of companies that want to profit off of selling fake meats and various other things and a lot of people that have an invested interest in getting people onto a vegan diet and like i said there is a lot of people in the last two years coming out and talking about carnivorism and why meat is like really good but there's so much from the vegans the normal doctors, the medical system that are saying like cholesterol is bad, saturated fats, red meat's bad. It's like, yeah, there's some big thing going on with that. Yeah, yeah, totally. Totally, Danny. No, I'm um, I'm, I'm really happy. I, I've tried with me, you know, to try this. I, I, I have to pass through a big barrier of trying and admit coming out. Uh, to my friends and family to say I'm eating meat and everybody was shocked like like you know not meat everyday meat <laughs> but everybody oh but uh, some not everybody but some people are oh, but uh, watch out you cannot eat meat every day or um, <laughs> um, you know now you can eat meat any day I mean 
of course, there is a balance. Uh, watch out where you're buying your meat. Watch out where it's coming from. You know what your profit, what 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 you supporting of. So I I support local uh, farmers. I support um, good cows that eat that eat grass uh, yeah. that, that they are grass fed eaters no, eaters. Um, but anyway, so there is a lot of brainwash. Even though what I want to say is like, even though the people that eat meat think eat meat is bad, like yeah. they, they want yeah. want to be vegetarian. You know, it's so already brainwashed this information. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's absolutely rife in our society in today's world, without a doubt. Yeah, it's it's really crazy. And and she is sharing like even more information on a regular basis on like a whole journey and really trying to help people so it's really good she's doing it not just for this interview but her youtube channel so definitely make sure you check out that link down below for her because yeah it's, it's there's a lot of people that are going through this i'm sure you can think of certain people that are going through a similar thing on a raw vegan diet that you can see it's not working for them you see which direction they're going in and they really need some animal foods to regenerate themselves it's really good that you are being as authentic and transparent as possible and sharing your message as much as possible. No, then for me, it's a pleasure, you know? It's a pleasure. It's like you are, uh, uh, again, there is, it's the time that we cannot be quiet. We need to speak and what we speak, the truth, like the experience, whatever makes you feel more, more human, more alive whatever i i'm here exposing all the these crazy pictures that happened to me yes it's it's for me it's, uh, it was one of the hard things i did in my life you know coming out public with this darkness dark past but i hope this is, is an open mind open like um it it, it could be uh, inspirational for the people yeah. that made the mistake that i did because I wish I had all of this information in the past, but my mind was very close, even though I want to be free and uh, help the world, but I was in the other side. And that was, yeah. uh, I, I see, I, it was another me, you know? We have a other reality, completely out of this world in that time. And now, buying, buying doing this uh, shift, on my on my consciousness about my mind trying to cooperate new things uh, of course it takes courage it takes uh, just just do it you know just try it <laughs> at least you know yeah. at least you, you can say your your experience at least yeah yeah you, <laughs> yeah you have nothing to lose if it's what's not working exactly. now like so yeah it's really good that yeah you're like you know what i'm gonna try it and look what happened for you just like me it's like yeah. i was thinking maybe this is gonna be a really bad thing like maybe it's not gonna work but a you don't know until you experience it so yeah it's really really key like i said for people just to try it what have you got to lose if you don't like it, it doesn't work for you just don't do it like simple as yeah. yeah yeah totally totally and sometimes you really like for me, with the meat, because I, you know, I, I thought I wanted, but in my, I thought mm, the animal, poor, you know, I, I felt like with pity, like, oh my God, uh, what I'm doing? But come on, really, like, do it for me, you know. I, I'm, and it's part of the life. It's it's uh, it's life itself. Yeah. It's the beautiful ecosystem that it always work like that for thousands and thousands of years. Why now we want to change something that it's, it's it was already here, you know? The yeah, for sure. Yeah, and it's like uh, something someone taught me in an interview, they interviewed them yesterday, the term veganism. Veganism didn't come around until 1944. Like you said, there's no civilization out there that's been on a vegan diet. There's a reason for that. So it's really be said. So before we end the interview, is there anything else that you think would be good to share with people or some last words that think may be helpful to someone that you haven't talked about so far in this interview? Well, um my last message danny thank you really first thank you so much for this opportunity 
it's to don't be so strict with yourselves. Don't be so hard. Um, and, and open the, yourself to new, new possibilities, to new, trying new things in order to get different results. Yes. And not <laughs> being strict to a paradigm, a belief, a thought that is not working. It worked in the past. Yeah. Okay. Amazing. But now we are evolving. Every day it's a new day. So let's embrace this change and with love, you know, not with uh, guilt and fear. Well, fear is attracting us. The fear was the, the main emotion that didn't let me really admit that I really want to try it and go for it. Also misinformation, also whatever. So yeah. um, I hope this message goes because we need more and more of this information of honesty and pure message like from people like me that passed through a long journey um, from yeah. being very, very sick to being here and feel so much free with this uh, choice that yeah. I did that changed my life. Thank you so much, Danny. Really, yeah, you're really. Welcome. That's, I'm that's so... really, really, really positive message. And it's like, she's, yeah, there's one thing I'd like to add on to that. It's just like, keep your mind open to everything attached. And I think be willing that what may not be working for you now may not be working later. Nothing is static. We're always changing and it's okay to change. And if someone else doesn't like it, who gives a crap? Even if you're on social media, just go and do it. Do it for yourself. Love yourself because you need it. You are the number one priority. And if you have to have an animal's life taken, yeah, maybe try and get it from the most ethical source where they had the best life possible. But know that if you have to take that life from an animal for you to thrive and for you to feel full your mission and live your human experience fully, then so be it. You don't see no lions out or any other carnivores in the natural environment saying, oh, I feel bad about this. No, they eat it because they need it to feel their best. And that's what she needed to do. And many other people like myself as well. Okay, so thank you everyone for watching. Don't forget to check out her YouTube and if she's got any yeah. other social media links, I'll get them off her and put them down below. Any questions for her or comments, leave them down below. Don't forget to like, please share so people, especially people that are destroying their health from a vegan diet and don't forget to subscribe. So yeah, thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Dana. Yeah, really, really, really. Gratidão. Yeah, really. so, <laughs> so everyone enjoy the rest of your day and stay tuned for many more videos.